This picture shows a badly damaged B-17. What happened? You will know more in the witness reports. So let's take a look at them. This B-17 was named Lil Satan and Queen o Hearts. U.S. Air Force Serial Number 4297890 and was assigned to 524th Bomb Squadron, 379th Bomb Group, on June 12, 1944. Thirteen days after the assignment, it was damaged on June 25, 1944, and finally lost on September 28, 1944. I will split the history of Queen o Hearts in two videos. In this part, I am focusing on the incident on June 25, 1944, when it was badly damaged. At that time, no nose art are visible in the available pictures. On June 25, 1944, the target was a bridge at coulanges sur yon France. Some would say, an easy milk run. No mission report of the 379th Bomb Group could be found. But the 303rd Bomb Group has a mission report for the June 25th mission. And the mission report said, the target was bridges at Saint and coulanges sur yon France. Same as 379th Group. They were part of the 41st Combat Bomb Wing. The report further said that three 379th Bomb Group aircraft scheduled to fly in the No. 4 element did not assembled and never seen during the mission. Also, no enemy aircraft were seen. That's all I could find about the mission. However, on their way back to England, approximately 50 miles northwest of Paris, the B-17 received a direct hit in the nose. Consolidated report from crew interrogation and missing air crew report No. 6738 contains what happened then. Over Paris, on their way back from the target, a burst of flak hit the nose of the aircraft directly. The nose was blown completely off, and the metal section was mushroomed back. The bombardier, Lieutenant Mata, had most of one leg blown off, the other leg fractured, one arm fractured, and serious internal injuries. Flak continued to hit them from then on. The whole aircraft vibrated tremendously. The navigator, somewhat hard of hearings, bailed out when the pilot gave the order to prepare bailout. The tail gunners soon followed suit. The pilot and the co-pilot remained right at their controls to keep the ship in the air. In the meantime, the bombardier crawled back to the escape hatch and was without oxygen. Major Andrews, who had gone back to the pilot's compartment just before the flak hit the nose because the navigator was getting low on oxygen, tried to give him a bottle. The pilot, Lieutenant Becker, now turned away from his formation, to the right, in order to get away from the flak. Number two and number three engines had been hit and were inoperational. The number two prop wouldn't feather and caused even more vibration in the aircraft. Everyone thought they would have to bail out for sure. Every instrument in the cockpit had been knocked out except the rate of climb. Even the fuselage on the co-pilot's side had been riddled with flak. However, the crew was determined to get back to England, if at all possible, to save the bombardier's life. Major Andrews and the engineer, Britton, finally managed to pull him back to the top turret. A terrific blast of cold air was coming through the plane, so they tied him to the turret. Then they gave him morphine and tied a tourniquet around his bad leg and bandaged his other wounds. In the meantime, Lieutenant Becker had approached the channel where the weather was very bad, and he was steadily losing altitude. He and Rawls had a terrific time keeping their plane in the air. Lieutenant Becker was thoroughly determined by this time not to ditch. Arriving at the English coast, he had to let down through a thin layer of clouds. This required steady nerves to get through it, and he broke out over England with poor visibility. The radio operator had been sending out distress signals and fixes on their position. He could transmit, but could not receive since Flack had damaged the radio. Lieutenant Becker headed for his home field, but seeing that he would not be able to make it, selected a Royal Air Force field about 30 miles away. The whole underside of the fuselage had been hit by flak, and he was worried about the wheels coming down. However, the wheels came down okay, and the flaps worked, but hydraulic system was shot out, and the brakes were inoperational. On the final approach, the engineer stood by to check the wheels manually. Lieutenant Becker made a beautiful landing on the end of the runway, although one tire was punctured by flak. They had fired red flares, and the Royal Air Force Ambulance came right out. The bombardier had died from lack of blood before landing. The navigator of the lead ship, Aircraft Q-229, pilot Lieutenant Guy G. Heilman, lead ship navigator, 
fixed the time and place of the men bailing out at 21-21 hours at Bovi at 18,000 feet. Navigator 2nd Lieutenant Robert W. Evans, Jr. and Tail Gunner Staff Sergeant Joseph Simonson bailed out. Technical Sergeant Robert A. Smith questionnaire said, Lieutenant Evans was last seen by Major Alexander B. Andrews. He was wounded and had blood on his right arm, but he bailed out before Major Andrews could get him. Other crews in the group saw the parachutes going down shortly after the B-17 was hit by flak. Lieutenant Evans was found dead, and his body was recovered at 2300 hours near Ilois, 8 kilometers west of Almale. Probably died of wounds. He was buried on the east side at the village cemetery. Documented by the German report AV, 1132-44. Staff Sergeant Simonson was captured and became a prisoner of war. No documents or information found where Staff Sergeant Simonson was captured. Once again, a damaged B-17 flying fortress brought her crew back to England. Lil Satan landed on Royal Air Force Airfield Hunsdon and was repaired. Than returned to combat status. It failed to return on September 28, 1944. But this is the topic in the next and second video about Lil Satan, also known as Queen O'Hearts. Thanks for watching and any feedback and questions are welcome.